good now? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm just thankful again for an opportunity to be here, to be on this side of terra firma. Praise the Lord. Somebody didn't wake up this morning. So I did, so I'm grateful. Amen. I'm grateful for our pastors, for and uh, Sister Sharon and Sister Asia for and Sister Pablos for extending this opportunity to come before you. Uh, I pray that the Holy Ghost will be with me today. Amen. I'm somewhat regretful. I am regretful, not somewhat regretful. Regretful that I wasn't able to be for every Wednesday service during this season of fasting. So while I ha so I would have understood and gained what all has gone before me. So if there's a little redundancy today, that's all right. It means that God wants you to hear it again. I won't apologize for it. I'll just say that it means that God wanted to, you to hear it again. You say amen with me? Amen. Uh, Sister Sharon uh, quoted my topic today. My topic is Yahweh's fast. The quest for justice, liberation, and obedience. And we will be looking at the key scripture, I think, for fasting, and that is Isaiah 58. We're back there again. Praise the Lord. Amen. But I'm prayerful today that God will use me to bring forth some new insights. Um into what that passage is actually talking about. Me, I'm a big context guy. I always want to know what God is really saying, especially to the people that he originally said it to. What was going on that made God come out like that? But before I get ahead of myself, let's bow our heads a little bit for some prayer because I need Holy Ghost help here today. I can do nothing without him. Gracious Father, we just thank you. Holy Spirit, we just thank you. Lord Jesus, I thank you for all that you have done to make all these things possible. And Lord, I just am praying today that you would take over, that I would just be your vessel, that you would uh, guide my mind and my mouth. Father God, that I would be able to bring forth edification for your people, uh, um, um, information for your people, power for your people, Lord God, to truly bring a word that is from your heart. Hallelujah. And I pray these things in the name of Jesus. Bless everyone, especially God, that has come out tonight to brave the biting cold, to, to be here and to sit under this teaching in Jesus' name. With thanksgiving, amen. Amen. Isaiah 58, it's only 14 verses, but it's kind of long. Would some, can I get a reader? Would someone like to read that for me? Y'all have your Bibles? Huh? Yeah, they, I'm going to give it to them. Amen. You want to do it? Cry aloud, spare not. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Tell my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask me of the ordinances of justice. They take delight in approaching God. Why have we fasted, they say, and you have not seen? Why have we afflicted our soul and you take no notice? In fact, in the day of your fast, you find pleasure and exploit all your laborers. Indeed, you fast for strife. 
and to strike with the fist of wickedness. You will not fast as you do this day to make your voice heard on high. Is it a fast that I have chosen? A day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head like a bulrush and to spread out sackcloth and ashes? Would you call this a fast? and an acceptable day to the Lord? Is this not the fast that I have chosen? To loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free, and that you break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry, and that you bring to your house the poor who are cast out? When you see the naked, that you cover him and not hide yourself from your own flesh, then your light shall break forth like the morning. Your healing shall spring forth speedily, and your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call. And the Lord will answer. You shall cry, and he will say, Here I am. If you take away the yoke from your midst, the pointing of the finger, and speaking of wickedness, if you extend your soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then your light shall dawn in the darkness, and your darkness shall be as the noonday. The Lord will guide you continuously and satisfy your soul in drought and strengthen your bones. You shall be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. Those from among you shall build the old waste places. You shall rise up Raise up the foundations of many generations, and you shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to dwell in. If you turn away your foot from the Sabbath, from doing your pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy day of the Lord honorable, and shall honor him, not doing your own ways, not finding your own pleasure, not speaking your own words. Then you shall delight yourself in the Lord, and I will cause you to ride on the high hills of the earth and feed you with the heritage of Jacob your father, the mouth of the Lord has spoken. fast that I have chosen? A day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head like a bulrush and to spread out sackcloth and ashes? Would you call this a fast and an acceptable day to the Lord? Is this not the fast that I have chosen to loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free and that you break every yoke. As the last verse said, the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Praise be to God. When I first looked at this verse, the first thing that impressed me was the fact of the commandment that came to Isaiah. Shout aloud from the depths of your throat Make this message heard amongst my people. Make it like the sound of a trumpet. Now, I don't know about y'all, but I used to play trumpet back in junior high school many moons ago. And I had a mute when I had to practice in my house. Because the sound of a trumpet, when it's blown on a clear note, is a piercing sound. 
It is vibrant. It gets down into the core of you. Hallelujah. And God wanted this message to really come forth to his people. He really wanted them to hear it. Now, there's some other views on that trumpet sound. It was reminiscent of the sounding of the trumpet on the day of Jubilee. After those seven years of sevens, on that 50th year, they would blast that trumpet and make a, an announcement of Jubilee. And there are some of the commentators uh, on this passage actually look at this and they say, well, wait a minute. This thing is actually a rebuke against fasting. What? Yeah. I said the same thing, Mother. I had the same Lord. Yeah. But in Zechariah 8, and then again in Nehemiah, God tells him, stop fasting. What, you think you're going to manipulate me by fasting? Yeah, <laughs> shocking, huh? He says, declare to my people their rebellion. Something was wrong. Let them know about their sin. See, it was the job of the prophet to make correction. He made correction to the king. He made correction to the priesthood, and he made correction to the people. That was his job as the mouthpiece of God. And Isaiah here is coming to Judah, who had been carried away into captivity, and now was in under Babylonian or Persian uh, oppression and domination, and it was saying, listen here now. Y'all got some things y'all need to get in order. Let's look at it. Let's look at it. Let's see it. He said, declare to my people their rebellion, the descendants of Jacob, their sin. For day after day they seek me out. They seem eager to know my ways. They will come in the church. They were doing the ritual. Day after day, the Lord said. You look like you eager to know my ways. You have an appearance of godliness. Y'all know the verse. Praise the Lord. The word of the Lord won't be broken. As if you were a nation that does what is right and has not forsaken the commands of his God. You ask me for just decisions and seem eager for God to come near to them. Here's the core of the problem. Is it ritual or religion? Or is it obedience? Is it doing what God told them to do? See, because when you get that picture right, you don't need as much fasting. Because you're already walking in the power. When your inward righteousness is manifesting as outward deeds, then you're doing the, what the thing God asks you to do. The prophet's job was to call people to covenant. He said, you say you fasting, but yet you're doing what you want to do. knows the first commandment? Can I get a quote? Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and strength. All your heart, soul, and mind, and strength. Heart, soul, and mind, and strength. That don't sound like you're doing what you want to do, do it? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. 
That means you're doing things according to God's will and not your own. When you come into service, when you come to a fast, then your mindset is on what God wants to accomplish. We got a lot of side effects of fasting that we concentrate on. I ain't put nobody down. Those side effects are real. But let's not lose the main point. And that's what this message is all about. Not to lose the main point. He says, as if you were a nation that does what is right and has not forsaken the commandments. See, some people are under the mistaken impression that those Ten Commandments have gone away. <laughs> they ain't going nowhere. The only thing Jesus did was condense them to help our little poor simple minds get a hold of this thing. So rather than ten, he gave us two. Let's see if y'all can do them. Yeah, love God, love your neighbor. That is the essence of the heart of God. He said all the prophets, everything hangs on those two commandments. Love the Lord. Everything that's in you. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Hold on to that. And you continue to look at this. Now they came there. The last thing that they expected was that the prophet was going to get up and rebuke them. That was the last thing in the world they expected. But that's exactly what they got. They actually had indictments against God. Hear what they said? Why have we fasted? They say, and you have not seen it. Why do we come to church every Sunday? And you haven't seen it. Why are we going through 40 days of consecration? And you haven't seen it. Why are we waking up at 5 a.m. with the men and praying? And you haven't seen it. Something wrong. I guarantee you it's not with God. Huh? Nobody's got to say amen. Okay, here we go. Why have you done on this all this stuff? We've doing all this stuff. We got our religion going on. Lord, we religious folks. See, but that was part of the problem too. They wanted to appear religious. Outward manifestations of piety. Well, look at me. I'm fasting. I just went through 40 days fasting. Jesus said, Wash your face. Don't even let nobody know you fasting. Come on now. Why have we humbled ourselves? Yet on the day of your fasting, here we go, you do as you please. You're not doing what I said do. You're doing what you wanted to do. And then you're exploiting all your workers. My God. You're not treating the people that are under you with equity. Let's break it down here. Let's keep breaking it down. Your fasting ends in quarreling and strifing and striking each other with wicked fists. Y'all know how you get to fasting? I mean, when you're really fasting, like a no food kind of fast, you get grumpy. Some of us get grumpy when we haven't had enough sugar. <laughs> Y'all know them, right? <laughs> get a little edgy. Be biting at the kids. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But this is exactly what God is talking about. You want me to execute justice on your behalf, but you're not even just in your own household. You mean as a rattlesnake. Oops. Oh, Lord. Huh? Yo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
their mistreatment of each other had got to the point where they were in fist fights. They were striking each other with fists. They was fighting. Yeah, church folk. The chosen of the Lord. On a fast. <laughs> was fighting. <laughs> God said, you cannot fast as you do today and expect that your voice is going to be heard on high. Stop the madness. What? Well, I'm just a guy that you can coerce. You can just do a little religion and all of a sudden I'm going to jump because you said jump. I thought you were supposed to jump when I said jump. What I told you to do was to love your neighbor. So he asked the question, is this the kind of fast I have chosen? Only a day for people to humble themselves. Is it only for bowing one's head like a reed and for lying in sackcloth and ashes? Is it only for outward demonstrations of religiosity? Is it only for ritual? I have studied the prophets. The prophets had a problem with ritual. See, because human nature is to allow ritual and religion to take the place of obedience. We think we can hide under religion. We think that because we do certain things, that God ain't really seeing our motives. But the last time I checked, he was an omniscient God. Knows all, sees all. You can't fool God. He know why you doing it. You really trying to lose 10 pounds? Huh? Y'all know him, right? Sometimes we fasting for material stuff. Well, God, if I do this 40-day fast and, you know, you'll bless me with this. Bless me with that. Our focus is inward on ourselves, what we want and what we need. But as we read through this, you're going to see that God is concerned with our outward manifestations, our praxis as it's called in theology what we do and that is confirmed by what James said he said what is this is pure religion you want religion take care of the widows and the orphans clothe the naked feed the hungry but then you're acting like your father Hallelujah. Lying in sackcloth and ashes, bowing your head down like a, so everybody can look and say, oh, he's pious. Oh, there goes the holy man of God. Look at him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is this what you call a fast day acceptable to the Lord? I'm going to go there right now, and I'll come back there again later. Do you all remember in Luke 4 when Jesus did his first sermon in Nazareth? He got up and he quoted Isaiah 61, verses 1 and 2. And then at the end of that, he said, and this and to declare the acceptable day of the Lord. So you think we might have some clue in that passage as to what is really acceptable to God? Say it again. Break the yokes. Undo the heavy burdens. Open the eyes of the blind. Cause the lame to walk. 
to give good news to the poor. So this is what God's really concerned about, huh? God does not, you know, the yoke meant slavery. See, a yoke is a form of bondage. And God's heart is that there is no bondage amongst us. God's heart is for liberation. I don't care how you look at it or how you cut it. I'm not talking about the Marxist kind, you know what I mean, where you grab up a bunch of guns and you go, you know, that violent revolution. I'm not talking about that. But I am talking about spiritual power. See, because what God is saying here is that when we turn our attention and focus to accomplishing those things and get up off these pews and go out and start doing some of this stuff, he goes with us. I'm jumping ahead of myself, but it's all right. God is good. He said, is this not the kind of fast I have chosen to loose the chains of injustice? People that are not being treated like they should be treated. People that have been pushed by our governments, by our all kinds of social systems that have been pushed to the margins of our society and they aren't treated right. They get in the courts, they can't get fair representation. They can't get no economic help. Huh? Injustice. And if we sit up here in church singing praises to God, praises to God, but yet we're not active in trying to help overturn these systems, oh man, we got a presidential election coming. Opportunity, people of God. Right. See, the path to greatness in God's eyes for any political leader comes through his concentration, his focus on the poor. The one that caters to the rich and the powerful, he has no merit before God whatsoever. Because God's heart is for the oppressed ones. You don't believe me? Think about Jesus. Where was where did Jesus come? Was he hobnobbing with Pilate in the palace? Oh, was he with Ananias in the in the, in, the, in the temple, rubbing shoulders with him? Where did they find him? On a hillside, out in the country, down at the end, with all the unseemly people. Wasn't that the major complaint that they had against him? That he sat and drank, ate and drank with sinners. God in the flesh. And he was amongst the marginalized and oppressed. People, can we get the picture here? Amen? Hallelujah. Praise be to God. to loose the chains of injustice, to untie the cords of the yoke, and to set the oppressed free and break every yoke. God wants the yokes broken. He, first, he, he sent Jesus to break the yoke of your sin. You Let me make a declaration. You have been set free from the power of sin. Sin no longer has power over you. Praise be to God. And it was the Lord's doing, and it should be marvelous in your eyes. I know it's marvelous in mine. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But God wants the yokes broken. I don't care whether they're social yokes or, or economic yokes or political yokes or mental yokes or physical yokes in your physical body. God's heart is for the breaking of that yoke. So when we come together to fast, our focus should be on breaking those yokes for each other. We don't have to worry about us. I mean, individuals, me. I don't have to worry about me. 
Because the more I pray for you, the more I'm going to get blessed. It's a dichotomy, but that's how God's work. That's how God works. That's how he does it. He says, is it not to share your food with the hungry and to provide the poor wanderer with shelter? When you see the naked, to clothe them and not to turn away from your own flesh and blood. Wow. I had to tell a brother of mine, I said, brother, you're doing great things. You're flying all over the world. You're doing all this and all that. Great thing. Powerful thing. Powerful man of God. But your first ministry is in your house. You ain't treating your wife right. Your kids are are not living in the fat that you're living in. You're in error. I don't care how high you are. You're in error. The first ministry is in the house. Amongst your wife, amongst your children, amongst your close relatives. See, because the provisions of God's covenant that he made with Israel, and the same covenant exists for us today, is that we take care of our relatives. Praise the Lord. Yes. Oh. Hallelujah. (laughs) Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Ah. He says, then, once you do these things, once you get on the right page with him, he says, then your light will break forth. Like the dawn. Can anybody stop the dawn? Can't stop the dawn. That's a light that's coming whether you like it or not. It's going to shine, shine, shine. Even if it's a cloudy day, the dawn still comes. Praise the Lord. He says that your light will break forth like the dawn and your night will be like the day. Noonday. That's bright, y'all. You have to put on your shades. Praise the Lord. He said your healing will quickly appear. He just wants you to line up. See, we're we're in covenant, y'all. And when we do our part. We don't have to worry about God is doing his part. We sang that song before the, before the service started today in our worship. Faithful, faithful, faithful is our God. I read in the book of Revelation, when he come, he's going to have names written on his thigh. One thigh say faithful, and the other thigh say true. That's the Jesus I want to see. Praise the Lord. That's the Jesus that I know as being active in my own life. Can I get a witness? Amen? Praise the Lord. He's going to do what he's supposed to do. Then you will call, and the Lord will answer. Boy, we do so many things to try to manipulate God into intimacy. Play God into intimacy. Didn't you read, know ye not that you are the temple of the Holy Ghost? Wait, 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 you tarrying, you're doing all this, you're doing all that, and Jesus is right there in you anyway. Think about it. Think about that. He said, I will send you another comforter, the spirit of truth. And he will what? Abide. That one too. Abide with you forever. That word abide means live with. Dwell with. Reside with. And he will never leave you nor forsake you. So that if there's any interruption in the presence of God in your life, it's not because God ain't doing his thing. Maybe it's because you don't grieve that spirit. 
Maybe you're out of alignment. Because the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. (laughs) Huh? And it has to be. Praise God. Praise God. Okay, 10 minutes. You will call and the Lord will answer. You will cry for help. And he will say, I am. I'm right here. What do you need, brother? What you need, daughter? What you need, son? He told, he told Moses from the beginning, I am that I am. Whatever you need me to be, I am. They tried to crucify, they tried to kill Jesus so many times because of them ego I me. That's Greek for I am. <laughs> Every time he said that and attached something to it, they tried to kill him because they knew what he was saying. He was saying he was God. I am the bread of life. I am the living water. I am the manna that came down from heaven. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. Oh, Jesus. And the glory of the Lord, no, wait a minute. Then your righteousness will go before you. God has imputed to us a righteousness in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. But a righteousness that's kept hidden is no righteousness at all. He said a light, he said it on the hill. So it can illuminate everything. You don't put it under a bushel. See, in our sins, our rebellion against God is like the bushel covering up our life. We got a righteousness that we didn't even earn. That's our light. That's that dawn breaking forth. And all God is saying is coming to alignment especially on this love issue and your righteousness will go before you and the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. You know what that's a picture of, right? When the, when the Israelites came out on the Exodus, they had the two pillars. Okay? The glory of the Lord went before them And then when the enemy came, it went in behind them. It was a barrier between uh, uh, Pharaoh and his armies and the Israelites as they was camped by the sea. The glory of the Lord being your rear guard. Your enemies can't even get you from behind. Yeah, it's good stuff. All he says is, if you do away with that yoke of oppression and with pointing fingers, making accusations, and maliciously backbiting out one another, come on now, gossiping, oh yeah, it's in there, (laughs) cut it out, praise the Lord. If you do that, and if you spend yourselves on behalf of the hungry and satisfy the needs of the oppressed, then your light will rise in the darkness. So even when troubles surround us all around about, when the cloudy days come, we can't figure out how we're going to make it through. Boom! That light will shine. He makes a way in the darkness. Yea, though I walk through the valley in the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. So they can scratch their heads. I give them something to eat. He 
told me to. Right? Obedience. Obedience. If you spend yourselves on behalf of the hungry and satisfy the needs of the depressed, then your light will rise in the darkness and your night will become like noonday. The Lord will guide you always. The footsteps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord. Hallelujah. He will satisfy your needs in a sun scorched land. He will be wandering through the desert. He did it for Jesus. I'm convinced that Jesus read this verse when the Holy Spirit was leading him out there. He was thinking about this one. <laughs> Lord, you said the Jew would satisfy my needs in this sun scorched land. I got to be out here in this desert for 40 days and 40 nights with no food. You know the difference between you and I? Uh, not me and you, but between us and Jesus. If God said it, Jesus believed every word of it. He didn't doubt it. Huh? He did it. He found his script in that book and he did it. He said, oh, this is me. And was God faithful? When he said that my Holy One will not see corruption, did he raise him? You know, that's the one key difference between us and every other religion on the face of the earth. Jesus. Because <laughs> can no other religious leader or figurehead say that they got up from the grave? That gives us an undeniable truth and a great hope that no one else holds. Our God got up from the grave. What you got? <laughs> you got some power? Get up from that grave then. Let me see. Well, that's right. Sorry for the rabbit hole. We almost done, y'all. Hallelujah. Your night will become like noonday. The Lord will guide you always. He will satisfy your needs in the sun scorched land, and he will strengthen your frame, all your bones. He will give you strength and vitality. I can't do everything I used to do when I was 23 years old, but I'm still kicking. Praise the Lord. Ain't right up to it. That's right. Praise the Lord. One kick, that's it. you know something? One kick in the right spot's all you need. <laughs> yeah, praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> you will be like the well-watered garden, like a spring whose waters never fail. There will be vitality that continues to well up in you. People won't understand it. I know what you've been through. Why you look like that? I know I get it. I remember you. But can you see me now? You don't love God? What's wrong with you? <laughs> I love God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. The waters will never fail. He said, your people will rebuild the ancient ruins and raise up the old foundations, and you will be called the repairer of broken walls. This is one of my favorite passages. The repair of broken walls, the restore of streets with dwellings. Anybody got any broken places in their life and had any broken places? Who's talking about family? You know, they were in exile, right? When they went back to Jerusalem, we noticed from Nehemiah and Ezra, they had to rebuild everything. They had to 
had to set up new government. They had to set up, they had to do everything. But what I found out was that God wasn't just talking to Judah in this passage. You know who else he was talking to? Cyrus and Darius. This passage is as much for the king as it was for the people. It was as much for Nehemiah and Ezra as it was for the people. See, because they have to start instituting some things, especially in the areas of justice and relieving oppression, economic opportunity, okay? We can come in here and pray, 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 but if we don't vote the right people in office, we sit in the house, don't go to the polls, don't cry. You got to be active in this thing. You are the ambassadors of Christ. That means you have an active part in God's kingdom. We've been around here talking about kingdom. Well, this message is a kingdom message. What it's saying is that we have an active part to play. We can't sit on our hands. We can't go through religion and ritual and think that we're moving God with it. Because until you start practicing what you preach, you ain't done nothing. Jesus could have sat up in heaven and kept giving edicts. <laughs> he is the king. He's God. He already was in the bosom of the Father. He had to come down here. But he did so that he could show us what we need to do. So he can show us how to do it. See, you get some of that spirit. See, God is going to give you some of that. You know, the same power that's going to raise me from the grave, he's going to give you some of that. And then, you know, he's going to help you understand his work. And then that spirit gets stirred up in you to give you the power to start doing the things that God said for you to do. Do I know how to love somebody right? No. But the Holy Ghost do. Do I have great revelation of God's scripture? No. But the Holy Ghost do. I didn't even know what I was going to say when I got up here. You notice I'm not reading like I usually do? I usually write my sermon. Y'all getting it like I do it in Africa now. <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> I just studied, but I ain't writing nothing. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I got notes, but I ain't writing this one. Praise the Lord. Didn't have time. But that Holy Ghost, he knows he's able. Amen? And we can trust him. All right. Repair of walls. God will help you rebuild those broken places, broken relationships, broken homes, all kinds of broken stuff, broken emotions, broken bodies. Restore of streets with dwelling. If you keep your feet from breaking the Sabbath, now, you say, well, we don't do Sabbath things. We just switched the day. Made it Sunday. Did you think that this passage don't apply? This, what's going on here is the same attitude that the Israelites had about fasting. They had about the Sabbath too. It was just another day to go through the motions. like, oh, I'm go yeah, I'm, I'm going to church on Sunday. I'm going to make sure I, this is convicting for me too. I'm going to make sure I'm out by one so I can go watch the football game. Doing what you please. One of the commentaries uh, talked about, uh, you know, today is Ash Wednesday. Yesterday was Fat Tuesday. Here we go. 
<laughs> well, you on fast today, but last night you was getting in there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh huh. I ain't talking about nobody in here. Praise the Lord. Jesus, God just wants us to get it right. He wants to bless us. I mean, with, in the mix then with all of these rebukes, these admonitions are wonderful blessings from God. Hallelujah. Wonderful blessing. If you keep your feet from breaking the Sabbath and doing as you please on my holy day, we even call it the Lord's Day. If you call the Sabbath a delight, I can't wait to get into the house of the Lord. And the Lord's Day honorable. If you honor it by not going your own way, there it is again, and not doing as you please and speaking idle words, then you will find your joy in the Lord. Anybody want some joy in the Lord? I don't see too many hands. Oh, oh wait a minute. Okay, okay. I got mine. I don't even need no music to get my shout out. Because I know how good God's been to me. I tell you. Speaking out of words. Man. You know, we can talk ourselves out of blessings. I got to catch myself sometime. I'll be candid with y'all. I'll be sitting there and I'll be like, man, what you, why are you so negative? What is this about? Shut up. <laughs> Don't forget me. You know? That's my confession for tonight. Then you will find you'll join the Lord. You will, and I will cause you, God speaking, to ride and triumph for the heights of the land. Wow. And to feast on the inheritance of your father, Jacob. Is the sealer for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Wow. I think he meant what he said. You, you hear the trumpet call today? Can you hear the blast of the horn? Can we as a people begin to adjust our attitude about how and why motivation we're worshiping? It's been an eye-opener for me, this study. To begin to attack. I was so happy about this testimony today. Because that's what we're talking about. Praying to an end. Yoke broken. Oppression lifted. Liberation given. Now that's praying, y'all. And we're called to do that. We're called to do that for each other. We're called to do that in this community. We're called to do that in this region. We're called to do that in this country. And to the ends of the earth. Wherever we see it, wherever we hear it, we're called to address it. Not to be fearful. He said, cry aloud and spare not. I wouldn't care if the president was sitting here today. I got a few things to tell him, too. I like the guy, but I got some things to tell him. Amen? We have that commission from God. We are God's ambassadors. We are his representatives of his kingdom here in the earth, and that's what he wants from us. Praise the Lord. Amen. Stand to your feet. Let's pray out. Gracious Father, we are thankful tonight for your word. Your word is truth. Your word is spirit and it is life. And we come, Lord God, to let it sink into our ears and into our minds and into our hearts today, God, that we will no longer be only hearers, God, but be doers of your word, that we will begin to practice pure religion. Hallelujah. And not just the form and fashion, God, 
of the ritual. Help us, empower us, God. Guide us, God. Father God, that we would be your instruments of transformation, God, from here to the ends of the earth. Father, but this is your calling commission upon our lives, and we accept it by saying amen, amen, and amen.